Hey guys, I'm here just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, where Lexus has flown me out to drive the new ES. And it comes in three flavors, and they're all behind me. The first one, that's the ES350. The one behind it, it's the hybrid. It gets 44 MPG combined. Wow, that's really good. And that one, the white one, that's the new F Sport. And coming up right now, we're gonna take all three of them for a ride and tell you which one I'd buy for my money. Let's start with the Lexus ES350. This is their most popular sedan, and Lexus says that they expect to sell about 50,000 units here in America every year. And for the first time, that car will also be available for all you Europeans and all you Chinese. So if you can get YouTube in China, there is your new Lexus ES. Now, some basic numbers. First of all, out of those 50,000, about 25% Lexus estimates will be the F-Sport, and about 15% will be the new hybrid. But before we get to those two cars, let's talk about this one and see what's under the hood. So you might think that this car and the F-Sport have different powertrains, but you'd be wrong. They both have the same 3.5 liter V6 paired to an eight-speed automatic that produces 302 horsepower. Now the biggest difference between the F-Sport and the regular ES isn't necessarily the powertrain, but it's the fact that the F-Sport has adjustable dampening suspension and comes standard with 19-inch wheels instead of this car's 18-inch wheels. Lexus says that this ES will get 33 miles to the gallon combined and the hybrid version will get 44 mpg combined. That's a significant difference, but the biggest difference between all three of these cars is how they drive. So let's take this ES for a ride and talk about how it compares to the other two. Three hundred and two horsepower is a lot of power to put through the front wheels and what that means is when you're sporting 18 inch wheels and you give it the beans this car will break loose screech its tires every time you floor it yeah traction control just kicked in a little bit just a hint of torque steer and there are 60 and Lexus says that takes exactly 6.6 .6 seconds which is actually very quick for a front wheel drive luxury sedan. Now, in the base Lexus ES350, this one, I really have three modes to choose from. I have Eco, I have Sport, and basically a normal mode. What that does is it changes a lot of parameters. For instance, when the car shifts its eight speed transmission, the engine note, because this car does have an enhanced engine note. You know how much I love that. But what it doesn't do is change how sporty the ride is. You have to move up to the F Sport to get the adjustable suspension. So here you have a car that will go fast, but does it like to go fast? You know, the chassis is tight. The steering is heavy, especially in sport mode. It makes the steering heavy. But is it a sports car? No, of course it's not a sports car. It's not meant to be. Uh, a GS, even in the F Sport version. The easiest way to tell the three models apart is well, let's start with this one versus the F Sport. The regular ES350 still has a spindle grill, but on the F Sport, the grill is blacked out. But there's even a bigger giveaway. Let me show you. On the ES350, there's this power hump, but if you get the F Sport, you get a spoiler. They both have electrically opening trunk and of course an electrically closing trunk that you can activate by kicking underneath the back end of the car. It's a car that will get you and your family to Sunday brunch or you to work in a very quiet, serene and tranquil state of mind and that's what Lexus is going for. The designer said that when this car was designed he wanted it to reflect kind of those special moments in your life like when you put on a nice watch or when you put on a well-fitting suit and I think that they've accomplished that. Lexus has always been very good at creating vehicles that feel like they will stand the test of time in terms of the amount of luxury they provide. Uh, and this car is no exception. Pricing has not yet been announced, but Lexus says that when it comes out in September, it will start right around 
$40,000, which is very similar to the corn car, and move up from there. Overall, I like this car a lot. If I were in the market for a vehicle that is luxurious, somewhat affordable, and offers a lot of interesting styling and even some interesting dynamic handling, this might be a car that I would certainly put on my list. All three cars have identical room for the most part. The hybrid has a little bit less because of the batteries, but what's important is that the Lexus ES chassis is shared with the Toyota Camry as well as the Avalon, sort of, kind of. Uh, the Lexus's chassis is a little bit stiffer and in the case of the F-Sport, a little bit sportier, but all three of these vehicles have tremendous amount of room in the back. Let me show you. Even with this huge panoramic sunroof, I have plenty of headroom and plenty of legroom. Oh my golly, Miss Molly, that is just massive. I love that, that just gives you so much more light. Really brings the outside in. Under the hood of the hybrid is, of course, a much smaller engine. Unlike the regular ES, this 300H has an inline four that produces 215 horsepower, and that's 15% more than the outgoing model. It has infinite amount of gears because it has a CVT instead of the eight-speed automatic. Now with only, I say only because 215 horsepower, once upon a time when I was Young was a boatload of power, but today it's only 215 horsepower. This car doesn't quite have the same amount of acceleration as the other two. Lexus says zero to 60 in 8.1 seconds, so let's see what that feels like. I'm not a huge fan of CVTs, but overall, if it wasn't for the CVT, I would say that this car would be uh, Almost fun to drive. Now if you were to line all three of these cars up from the front, it would be hard to tell which one is which. But if you take a look at this spindle grille, the hybrid has kind of the softest design language of all three. Unlike the F-Sport, the grille isn't all blacked out and it doesn't scream, go fast. Hey guys, check it out, I'm backing up, but I'm not just backing up the regular way, I'm backing up the hybrid way because I'm running pure electric. Unlike the other two, this car can go on pure EV mode, making it silent, but not deadly. One very cool feature about this hybrid, besides the fact that, of course, it gets really good MPG, are these wheels. Now, they may look like regular Lexus wheels, but these are special noise-reducing wheels. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a normal wheel, and here, is the Lexus ES noise reducing wheel. Once again, normal, quiet. It's like a drum, I can start playing it. So what's the magic? Follow me. It's right here. It's this little channel in the wheel that helps keep the wheel quiet and almost like a bass drum. You know, there's a lot to like about this car, but there are things that I'm not too excited about. First and foremost is this mouse. The way that this works, the way that this touchpad feels and activates the different controls is very fussy and very non-intuitive. The other problem with this car is that it's almost, can you believe I'm gonna say this, too quiet. When a car is this quiet, it feels like it doesn't have a soul to it. and even though you can change the engine note by changing the way that the engine sounds with the enhanced audio system, it's not real. It, in a way, it makes it actually worse. Finally, there are three settings that you can choose from, and basically normal to eco to sport does change how heavy the steering is, but it goes from heavy to very heavy to super heavy, and that to me doesn't give me any feedback. It doesn't let me know what the road is doing or it doesn't make me want to go fast. It just makes me want to cruise down the highway at a nice, easy pace. And maybe that's what most people will do in this car. Who knows?
Is there such a thing as black chrome? Well, there you go, right there. And that means we've got the F Sport. There is an additional sport mode that you can set. Sport Plus, when you're behind the wheel of this fast and furious vehicle. So here's my biggest issue with this car. It's got the same engine, the same power as the regular ES350. Now that's not a bad thing, but nevertheless, if you're gonna be competing with the Europeans, and these cars do compete with the C-Class, the 3 Series, the A4, you need more than just an appearance package and adjustable shocks. You need to have some cojones, right? Give it a free-flowing exhaust, give it 350 horsepower, and give it something to distinguish it from the other two models. The good stuff about this car is that it feels like it's chiseled out of a brick, that for a front wheel drive car, there's virtually zero torque steer, and the brakes, when applied, are linear and progressive. That's the good, but not everything about this car is great. First and foremost, while this control does change how heavy the steering wheel is, and even though the engine note isn't real, let me put it in Sport S Plus, it does recreate that sensation in the same way that a video game recreates the sensation of going fast. Here we go. Oh yeah, my dial turned uh, orange, and I am ready to rock and roll. Now this F Sport is basically an appearance package, kind of like the Audi S line, but there is one thing that I do really like about it, and that is these exhausts. They're not fake like some of the Germans. There's actually an exhaust tip that's poking out the back here to give you at least a sense of real exhaust. I know the currently the German style is to kind of put a fake blank in here. I hate that. I like this a lot better. Now, if it were my money, which one would I buy? You know, they're all actually very good, surprisingly good, but I love the fast, the furious, so I'd go for the F Sport. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news views, and of course, Lexus ES Hybrid and F Sport reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.